So just a little more about what we buy and why. So we buy apartment buildings. We like them because investors like them. They're easily understood. They typically cash flow more per unit per month than the other kinds of properties we buy. And it's not terribly difficult to get loans. The downside to them is that the price per unit is frequently pretty high. You typically are going to need a sponsor to get bank funding, and we'll talk about sponsorship more later, but basically it is that if you don't already have a commercial portfolio, banks are typically not going to lend to you. They, you're going to have to find somebody who has the experience, the bank accounts, um, and other things for banks to look at. So you typically can't go in and buy a 40 or 50 unit on your own unless you have a very healthy bank account. It's very hard to find owner financing unless the property has really been mismanaged. And typically you're dealing with um, fairly strong um, tenant landlord laws. Expenses tend to be higher than they are in mobile home parks and self-storage. So let's talk about mobile home parks and why I like those. They are less expensive generally. They are typically very good opportunities to get owner financing, mainly because um, a lot of people developed their own um, mobile home parks 20, 25 years ago and they're ready to sell. So they built them up themselves and they haven't necessarily managed them like somebody who has um, a lot of apartment buildings. It's not uncommon to find, particularly in smaller communities, mobile home parks where um, the owner's still working off of a yellow legal pad or um, has things that his accountant does at the end of the year. They run off of cash. And so it's hard for people to get loans it is also, they are not the bank's favorite asset class, so it's harder to get loans on them. But they are the best for over ca overall cash on cash return most of the time. The downside is that there's an image problem a lot of times with mobile home parks. There, when you say mobile home parks, a lot of people hear trailer park and they go to trailer trash. And so the visual is low-end housing and it is harder for to find investors and lenders because that image tends to permeate the, in, the entire asset class a lot of times. The truth is that there are some very high-end um, manufactured housing communities um, over 55 um, things, there are communities that are on really great land that are actually, um, you have to have key card to get in. One of the big downsides with mobile home parks is if you buy a property with vacant lots where there isn't a home on it, and most of them have vacant lots. It's more expensive to put a home on that lot than it is to fill a vacant apartment. So typically you have to find a mobile home and bring it in, get it set up, all those things, and then get it rented or sold. Now we have ways to deal with that that, are, um, that work pretty well. And so um, maybe at a later time, we can delve into that in a little more depth. The other thing we buy are self-storage. It is, of all of the three we buy, they're the easiest of all to get loans. Investors tend to like them, and they're fairly easy to build onto, and they're not terribly expensive to add to. The downside is that typically in, when in terms of cash on cash return or how much they cash flow per unit, it's the lowest of all of them. 
self-storage is a commodity. It's a business and there's no customer loyalty. So people look at price and price only, basically. It is easy because it's not terribly expensive to build these. It's fairly easy to have an area become overbuilt. And so when we're doing due diligence on buying self-storage, we have to really make sure who the competition is, how far they are away from us, if it's easy to build others in the area. So that is one of the things we have to pay most attention to. And they're more expensive. They typically, per unit, they selling at a higher price. Okay, so let's now talk about markets and finding markets to invest in and wh what is about markets, some basic information about markets. So the first thing I want to say is that all markets cycle. You can go anywhere in the world and look at housing and the same cycle appears. You tend to see most businesses, if they have cycles, they're going to have a cycle as well. Don't necessarily know how to tell you to identify a business cycle and where you are in it, but I can tell you how we figure out where we are with, um, with real estate. Okay, so right now it's hard to find good buys in commercial. That's the not so good news. I'm going to tell you the good news in here in just a couple minutes. So stick around. So right now, commercial is selling around the company country, excuse me, at a five to a seven cap rate. And we're going to talk more about cap rates later. However, right now, the cost of money in commercial is five to five and a quarter percent. So typically in a cap rate, it's a 5% return. And so if your cost of money is 5% to five and a quarter, then paying a five, buying a property at a five to seven cap rate doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think things are going to be changing soon. So typically in commercial, well, let me back up for a minute. In, in residential, everybody, most everybody knows that if you are buying a house to live in, that you can get a mortgage on a fixed rate interest rate for 25, 30 years. In commercial, the term is typically 20 to 25 years. And it balloons and you have to refinance it every three to seven years. So it is, you typically don't have to rebuy it, but it goes back to the mortgage company and they underwrite it again from the beginning, like this is a new loan. A lot of people, now remember, we're saying here that the that people, that these loans are five to seven years. And you think about what the interest rates were three to five to seven years ago, and they were three to 4%. Interest rates are on the rise. So what's going to happen when these loans come up for refinance is the bank is going to underwrite it again at the current loan rate and they're going to do what they call stress the loan, which means they're going to add a percent more to your interest rate just to see how your property is going to cash flow. I think there are going to be a lot of people who bought properties three, five years ago who are going to find themselves when they come to refinance that the bank is going to want them to bring money to the table before they're going to refinance it. That's going to be an opportunity for us. So we just said residentials, 25 to 30 year loans. Commercial is a three to seven year balloon with 20 to 25 year am, amortization. So what do we look for in a market? 
we are now I'm gonna tell you first off I typically don't buy in in the large primary markets because typically the people who are buying there right now are the hedge funds um, the big insurance companies, the um, teacher unions, all those kinds of things who are looking for a small return for a safe purchase. So they, if they get 3 to 4% on their money, they're typically going to be happy. I can't buy something at a 3 to 4% return. And so those properties that are very desirable in primary markets are not ones that I can compete for successfully. So I tend to be in, not in the primary markets. I may be in the suburbs that are the outer suburbs. I'm in secondary markets and I'm also in the small tertiary markets. What I'm looking for are areas that are stable and are not losing populations. So some small towns are losing population or have, um, have lost jobs. Um, the unemployment rate is high. I'm probably not going to want to be in those areas. It's going to be an ongoing struggle. But stable is fine. I tend to avoid war zones. There are people who do really, really well um, with those kind of properties. You tend to need to be very close if you're going to buy those, and you're going to have to manage them very, very closely and stay on top of them. There's a lot of turnover. Um, you have issues a lot of times with drugs and crime in the area. So for me, because a lot of where I invest is away from where I live, then I just don't buy in these kinds of areas. So we just spoke a little bit about the primary, secondary, and tertiary markets. If you go um, and look up all markets or all towns are in some, um, in some MSA, which is the metropolitan statistical areas. If you are looking um, at a town or an area, you want to find out what metropolitan statistical area it's in. I typically want to find areas outside the actual city. So the MSA is not just the city. If you think of it as the city or the major town with kind of rings around it where people commute into. So you are, so for instance, um, we're in the Baltimore, Washington area. And so people, Baltimore and Washington are very, very expensive right now, unless you are in an area that is high crime. And so what we do is if we're looking for those, we look out in, in the, in the far suburbs and so 20 30 40 miles out from the center city and you see what's out there and it's still in the same metropolitan statistical area we are looking for areas or towns where jobs are coming in so how do we find towns where the jobs are coming in we'll talk about a little that a little bit more here in just a few minutes we look to find communities that are actually actively seeking growth. So those are communities that have um, economic development councils that are going out of their way to try and attract business and bring business in. So one of those where we invest is Florence, South Carolina. They've got a very active um, community development center um, and they are very pro-business. So those are good places when you have jobs coming in, people need a place to live. Right around where we are, um, up in Baltimore, the um, 
Amazon is building a couple of distribution places and so you got to know there's going to be jobs coming in to those areas. So find out where jobs are coming in and look to see if you can find properties there. So all markets cycle, whether they're residential, commercial, and how do we find the greatest markets that no one else knows about? 